founded by slave owners who wanted to be free. <laughs> Am I right? A group of slave owners who wanted to be free. So they killed a lot of white English people in order to continue owning their black African people so they could wipe out the rest of the red Indian people and move west and steal the rest of the land from the brown Mexican people, giving them a place to take off and drop their nuclear weapons on the yellow Japanese people. You know what the motto? You know what the motto of this country ought to be? You give us a color, we'll wipe it out. Good evening, America. Welcome to Real Talk Radio. My name's Stitch. Uh, this is our first episode this evening. I'd like you all to take the time uh, while you're listening in to check into the chat room, log in. And for those of you who'd like to call in and join the show, uh, you can call in at 352-5561. I'm sorry, 352-556-1321. All right. Let's get started. Tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about the basic differences between uh, the conservative and liberal beliefs. Now, I personally thought I was a lot more liberal than I am. Uh, when I read this, uh, I, I realized that I'm actually 50% conservative. So I uh, changed a lot about how I feel about uh, the election system, and naturally, I, I have to pay a lot more attention to the individual. So I'm going to go through, um, oh, there's about 21 different key issues that uh, conservatives and liberals disagree on. And as we go through them, uh, I'd like you to, you know, keep track of which ones that you're liberal on, which ones you're conservative on. And if you have any comments, uh, I'd like to hear from you. We're going to start right off uh, with one of the most controversial issues on the list, of course, abortion. Uh, conservatives are totally against abortion. They believe life begins at conception and that abortion is murdering a human being. N nobody has a right to murder a human being. Uh, the liberal viewpoint is that a fetus is not a human life and that a, the decision to have an abortion uh, should be a cho personal choice between the woman and her doctor. And uh, the government should stay out of it. And women should be guaranteed the right to a safe and legal abortion, including partial birth abortions. I'm not going to read you the uh, definition of a partial birth abortion because it's it's pretty nasty. But uh, this is an issue that I have a lot of struggle with. I myself, for my own personal decision, would never choose uh, an abortion. But I do believe that. I don't have the right to, to make that choice for a woman. So I have to go with the liberal side on this. Uh, I think there's a lot of issues that go along with this. We could do a whole show on this issue alone, uh, all the different reasons why uh, I think that a woman should have the right to have an abortion. One of the main reasons that uh, conservatives argue about is that they don't feel the government should have to pay for an abortion. And while well, that might be true, but if you're going to force someone to have a baby, chances are the taxpayers are going to pay for that child, uh, child support for, you know, at least 18 years of their life. And what, what kind of life are we going to give that kid uh, with an unwanted mother? He's either going to end up in a, a bad home life or he's going to be a part of the system. So uh, on that issue, um, I'm liberal. Uh, if anybody else has got some different ideas, they'd like to hear about it. If not, we're going to go on to the next one, affirmative action. Uh, people, uh, conservatives believe that people should be admitted to schools and hired for jobs based on their ability, and that race should not be used as a factor for or against. Uh, liberals believe that due to racism in the past that minorities were deprived of the same education and employment opportunities as whites. And that was true at one time. Uh, affirmative action based on the beliefs that America is still a racist society and that minorities still lag behind whites in all uh, the statistical measurements of success. Uh, well, that might be true, but I don't believe that... Uh, we are a racist society anymore. I don't believe a racist society would have elected a minority uh, 
to run the country for eight years. Uh, and I just don't, I think this is uh, a measure that has passed its time. It's, it's time to do away with affirmative action, and it is time for us all to uh, take responsibility for ourselves. Uh, it, we have proven uh, through the fact that President Obama is, is in office and there are uh, minorities at every level of government and uh, corporate leadership that uh, anybody can make it. It's, it's just a rough road. Uh, it's not any easier for poor white people than it is for poor black people. I'm sorry for those who disagree with that. So uh, I, I'm a conservative on that one. Uh, the next one is the death penalty. De uh, conservatives b believe strongly in the death penalty. They believe that it is a punishment that fits the crime, that it's neither cruel or unusual, Ooh. and that executing a murderer is the appropriate punishment for killing an innocent life. Um, liberals think we should abolish the death penalty. Death penalty is inhumane and cruel and unusual punishment and does not deter crime. Uh, imprisonment is the appropriate punishment, and every execution risks killing an innocent person. Again, I have a slight conflict with this one. Uh, for the most part, I believe in the death penalty. I believe if, if you can prove he did it, you know without a shadow of a doubt he did it, I, I don't see any reason... Uh, why we should have to support that person in prison for the rest of their lives. If there's any doubt, on the other hand, then I don't think the death penalty should be allowed. There's been several people recently that have been uh, taken off a of death row due to DNA evidence. There's a, a group of people out there fighting uh, the, the defense attorneys that are trying to have their clients retested because there are so many uh it will cost too much money now i think a person's life is worth any amount of money that it's going to cost to do those dna tests uh, it needs to be done if you're going to put somebody to death you better darn well be sure he's guilty and so, so I, I lean i lean conservative on that economy now this is something that we don't pay enough attention to because uh, most of us don't have any money, so we really don't care about the economy. But <laughs> if we don't get the economy straightened out at the top, uh, old Reagan's trickle-down economics isn't working anymore. We need, need a new plan. Con conservatives feel that the free market system, competitive, competitive capitalism, and private enterprise uh, give us the best opportunity and the highest standard of living for all. Free markets produce uh, more economic growth, more jobs, higher standards of living than those systems burdened with excessive government. Uh, liberals favor a market in which the government regulates the economy and protects us against big business. Unlike the private sector, the government's motivated by public interest, and liberals believe that we need government to regulate the level uh, government regulation to level the playing field. I'm totally liberal on this one. Uh, this this is probably my biggest beef um, with conservative Republicans. Uh, is Reagan's trickle down economics is based on uh, the idea that the corporations are going to make more money, create more jobs, and pay better wages. But it, since NAFTA. Uh, that has not been the case. Corporations have become so greedy that all they care about is the bottom line. These are millionaires and billionaires um, that are crying about pennies. Now, I I'm going to take somebody to task here right now because th this is something that really irritated me when uh, they were talking about Obamacare. Um, Papa John's Pizza came out and complained that if Obamacare were to go through, it would cost him 13 cents per pizza to give his employees insurance. They charge a buck and a half for pepperoni. Make it 50 cents more per pizza and give them dental too. 
You know, uh, that's that's just plain greed. That guy is as rich as rich can be, and he's going to cry about 13 cents a pizza? Give me a break. Sorry, Papa John. You're on my shit list. I won't eat there again. Let's move on. Education school vouchers. Uh, this this is one that, that's really controversial uh, for those of you who have kids in school. School vouchers give parents the right to choose uh, good schools for their kids, and not it's not just for those who can afford private schools anymore. It, it allows you to, to go outside your district and, and choose a school that you think is better. Uh, liberals believe that school vouchers are an untested experiment, number one, and that they take away money from the public school system, and that we need to focus more on funding the existing schools to raise the teacher salaries and reduce class size. That makes more sense to me. Um, if you use the voucher program, you're still going to have the same percentage of people in a lousy school. And the same percentage of people are going to grow up stupid. It's just going to be a different group. So I have to go with the liberals on that one. I believe the public school system is the way to go. I believe we need to quit stealing money from our public school systems to fund other things and start focusing on uh, changing the curriculum to uh, give our kids a better opportunity when they get out of school. You can't get a job with a 12th grade education anymore unless you want to work at Papa John's. But... uh, we need to start teaching the skilled trades again. I think that's very important. We need to bring that back into into our education system. Let's move on to the environment. Uh, conservatives. Conservatives desire clean water, clean air, and a clean planet just like everyone else. Well, gosh, I hope so. However, they believe that the extreme environmental policies destroy jobs and damage the economy. They believe that changes in global temperature are natural over a long period of time and that science has not shown that humans can affect permanent change. In other words, global warming is a myth. Now, uh, the liberals believe that global warming exists and it's caused by pollution, carbon monoxide, and the U.S. is a major contributor to global warming. And that uh, laws should be enacted to significantly reduce that amount. Uh, I'm I'm totally liberal on that. I think corporate America needs to clean up its act. We need to take care of our planet. Our resources won't be here forever if we don't. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, uh, give you guys some time to think about everything we've said so far. I hope some of you will check into the uh, chat room and... Uh, Let's start a conversation on this. Uh, For now, this is Real Time Radio, a Real Talk Radio with Stitch, and we're out. What's the difference between the Army and the Cub Scouts? Uh Cub Scouts don't have heavy artillery. Hey everyone, it's your best bud sideshow, host of Blunt Talk Radio on the TSRN. When I want to go catch a drink or two in a fun and relaxed environment, I check out Skinny's at Hudson. Skinny's always is rotating the best selection of craft beers and IPAs, and a full liquor bar too, serving you up with a huge selection of your favorite adult flavored beverages. Hungry? I know I am, and Skinny's delivers the best food this side of the bay. Whether you're into the mood for oysters, wings, salads, burgers, or sandwiches, Skinny's has you covered. Huge portions, too. And as far as entertainment goes, Skinny's always has something going on. Live bands, DJs, karaoke, pull and darts, a full-size volleyball court complete with sand, and all your favorite sports on the flat screens. So next time you want to go out and catch somewhere unique and different, give Skinny's and Hudson a try. Skinny's Bar and Grill, 13228 US 19, Hudson, Florida. And tell them Sideshow sent you. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45, non-tobacco user, could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policy 
policies of $500,000 and above. A man aged 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers, too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-430-1481. 800-430-1481. That's 800-430-1481. Attention small business owners. Growing your business can be tough. Just when you thought you were making money, you found out that you owe the government money. And now that you owe the IRS their cut of your business profits, you may be broke. And if you don't take things seriously, you could go to jail or have your business shut down. But you do have an option. If the IRS is threatening you for unpaid taxes, call the Tax Resources Network. Their tax professionals and ex-IRS agents have over 23 years of experience dealing with the IRS, saving business owners and the self-employed millions in tax dollars. Let us negotiate with the IRS on your behalf. We may be able to reduce your tax debt for a lot less than you owe, help with the IRS audit, and even criminal investigations. If your business owes the IRS $15,000 or more and the IRS is threatening you, don't wait and let your business get shut down or worse. Call for a free consultation. Call 800-917-1799. 800-917-1799. That's 800-917-1799. Again, 800-917-1799. You're struggling with your mortgage. You think about it. You don't do anything but think about it. What are we going to do if we lose the house? Where are we going to go? At work. I can't let anybody find out. I'm so embarrassed. At dinner. How can I tell the kids? It's going to wreck their lives. And at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get through this. What's going to happen to us? It's time to stop thinking. It's time to start dialing. Call 1-888-995-HOPE for a free government program that offers expert one-on-one advice about your mortgage options. I'm all alone. No, you're not. We've helped over a million homeowners, and we want to help you. And now there are more ways to help. Call 1-888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 877-229-7271. Again, 877-229-7271. That's 877-229-7271. 877-229-7271. And we are back. Uh, Welcome, everybody. Uh, For those of you just tuning in, this is Real Talk Radio. I'm your host, Stitch, and we're talking about uh, conservative versus liberal issues. Let's see. We left off with uh, the environment. Um, Just check the chat room. It's pretty lonely in there. I know there's a few of you out there. Uh, check in. Uh, let, let me know what you're thinking. Uh, how, how do you feel about what we've uh, discussed so far? And also, you know, use the phone line. Call in. one 556 1321 All right. We're going to move on to a, an issue that's near and dear to... Uh, Everybody here in Florida, that's for sure. And I know my buddy out there in Texas is going to like this one as well. Gun control. Second Amendment gives uh, conservatives. Second Amendment gives the individual the right to keep and bear arms. Gun control laws do not thwart criminals. You have a right to defend yourself against criminals. More guns means less crime. Liberals believe the Second Amendment gives no individual the right to own a gun, but allows the state to keep a militia, uh, in other words, the National Guard. 
They believe guns kill people and guns kill children. Well, sorry, I'm definitely conservative on this one. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Stupid people that leave guns where children can get them kill people. Uh, I don't believe that more guns means less crime, but I do believe uh, that the Second Amendment definitely gives us the right to bear arms against our government should they become a tyranny. Uh, I, I don't see where there's a gray area in that. I am totally conservative on this one, totally uh, believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, I do believe that there should be some regulation. I believe if you've got an IQ below 97, you should not have a gun. I believe if you've got a bad attitude like me, you should not have a gun. Uh, there, there's just some common sense that's got to go along with it. And those of you who do own guns, that's a big responsibility. There's no reason why it should ever be left on a table uh, unattended. Nobody should ever be able to get a hold of your gun. I know many people who own guns, and they're kept locked up. And, you know, that's, that's just common sense. Unfortunately, not all Americans have common sense but they do have the Second Amendment. All right, next we're going to move on to health care. Uh, this is something that uh, I, I think the nation has been crying for for forever, and now that we finally got it, everybody's bitching about it. Um, uh, free health care, uh, conservatives believe that free health care provided by the government means that everyone will get the same poor quality health care. The rich will continue to pay for superior health care while all others will receive poor quality free health care from the government. Health care should remain private. Uh, liberals believe that uh, supporting universal, universal government supervised health care uh, is important. There are millions of Americans who can't afford health insurance and they're being deprived of the basic rights to health care now uh, somebody called during the break uh, if uh, you're calling to talk to me please call back now's the time to call not during the commercials I'm anxious to to talk to you so uh, give us a ring and we'll put you on the air now back back to the health care uh, I'm very liberal about about this one I don't think that uh, Health care should be hoarded and uh, saved for just the rich. I think that every American citizen uh, should have the right to go down to the doctor's office and get a flu shot. I think we should all have the ability to have preventative medicine instead of having to wait until we're dying and go in and, and raise a, a humongous bill in the emergency room that still ends up getting paid for by the taxpayers just through a different process. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the federal government gives our state, uh, I think it's about $300 million a year to pay for uh, unpaid emergency room bills. Now, our beautiful state of Florida turned, turned down the money for uh, the Affordable Health Care Act, and therefore the federal government has quit sending the, uh, I believe it's called the PIT fund, uh, which is $300 million that Governor Scott would get to dole out to, to the emergency rooms. Well, we already know that Governor Scott uh, has uh, scammed money from the Medicaid fund in Louisiana. I don't see why we should give him more opportunity to do it here. But the bottom line is, if this is the greatest country in the world, and it is, uh, then, then our people should have the best. Nobody in this country should be starving, homeless, or sick. It's, it's just not right. There's too much money in this country to allow people to suffer that way. And, and the people who have the money and don't want to pay the taxes, you're greedy pricks. <laughs> That's where I stand on, on health care. Homeland Security. <laughs> this, this one cracks me up. The conservatives are wary of parts of the Patriot Act. 
they're not so sure about it. The liberals opposed the Patriot Act. So who voted it in? I don't understand that. Uh, there, I, I do believe that uh, there have been instances where our president has been held hostage by Congress, uh, such as the case of Vietnam, uh, where we needed to send more people and Congress wouldn't allow it. Um, and so maybe there is uh, some need for for our commander-in-chief to have the ability to, to uh, send troops without congressional approval. But that's a lot of power to give one guy. An awful lot of power. This one... Uh, I can't even chime in on this one. I, I, I don't know if I'm for it or against it. I, I have to read the whole document and uh, really do my own little legal uh, research on it. But it, it's, it's a real questionable plan, i, I got to say that. So I, I'm neither conservative or, or liberal on that. I, I'm with everybody else. I'm confused and a little concerned. Uh, next on my list is immigration. Uh, conservatives support legal immigration at, at current numbers, whatever that is, but do not support illegal immigration. Well, I don't think anybody really supports illegal immigration. Government should enforce immigration laws, and they oppose President Bush's amnesty plan for illegal immigrants. Those who break the law by entering the U.S. illegally should not have the same rights as those who obey the law by entering legally. Uh, if there were a decrease in cheap illegal immigrant labor, employers would have to sub substitute higher-priced domestic employees. Legal immigrants, or perhaps in legalized immigrants, or, or perhaps increase uh, mechanization. Uh, liberals support legal immigration and increasing the number of legal immigrants permitted to enter the U.S. each year. Support blanket amnesty for current illegal immigrants. I believe that regardless of how they came to the U.S., illegal immigrants deserve U.S. financial aid for college tuition, uh, visas for spouse or children to come to the U.S., and that families shouldn't be separated. And, wow, these are all... Uh, Pretty confusing issues, and, and um, again, uh, there's a lot of gray area in this one. For the most part, I'm conservative on this. Um, I don't believe that we should, definitely don't believe that we should give illegal immigrants financial aid, uh, college tuition, uh, Obamacare, or, or any other government assistance. Illegal immigrants should be rounded up and deported. Now, I do see an issue with those immigrants that were brought here as children, raised here, and have no, no family uh, left in their other country to go back to. As far as they know, they're Americans. I don't know what we do about that. Uh, I think those people... If, if you've made it here 18 years and you're, you're not a criminal, uh, you're graduating high school doing what you're supposed to do, I, I think they should give them a path to citizenship. Maybe not immediate, but uh, there should be, a, should be an exception for those, for those kids. Uh, those coming across definitely should be sent back. I don't know why we have a different treaty with Cuba with Cuba, if you get your foot on the ground, uh, you're legal. If they catch you in the water, they send you back. There, that's really a stupid policy, but they, they should go one way or the other. You either let them in or keep them out. That's, so I'm, I'm going to go with uh, conservative on that. Religion. Ooh, ooh, big hot topic. We're definitely going to be doing a full show on this. Conservatives believe the phrase separation of church and state is not in the Constitution. First Amendment to the Constitution states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. 
This prevents the government from establishing a national church. However, it does not prevent God from being acknowledged in schools, government buildings, or anywhere else. Uh, Conservatives oppose the removal of symbols of Christian heritage from public and government spaces. The government should not interfere with religion and religious freedom. Liberals support the separation of church and state. Religious expression has no place in government. Support the removal of all references to God in public and government spaces. Religion should not interfere with government. Another tricky issue. No, religion should not interfere with government, and uh, there should be no national religion, and our laws should not be based on religion. But our country was founded by Christians, and Christianity is all over our money, our government, our slogans, and I don't think that people migrating here that have a different point of view should have the right to change that. So, although I do believe that we should respect uh, everyone's difference of opinion and their right not to believe in Christianity, uh, I don't think that our right to believe in it uh, should be taken away from us. That is something, I don't I don't care if you're an atheist or not, you don't have to step on somebody else's religion. I'm not a Muslim, but I'm not going to spit on Islam. I'm not going to burn a Koran. I'm not going to disrespect an atheist. It's just not what America stands for. This is supposed to be the land of, uh, home of the free and the brave, you know, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of, uh, to be different. Now, if, if we're going to start saying what we can and can't be different about it, you're squashing the whole freedom issue. So I'm, I'm going conservative with this one. Same-sex marriage is next on the list. This is a real popular topic right now, and it's pretty much been answered all over the country. The majority of America has already weighed in, and we don't care. Uh Conservatives believe marriage is between one man and one woman. Opinions differ on the support for the creation of a constitutional amendment establishing marriage as the union of one man and one woman. Now, uh, liberals believe that gays should be able to get married. This, this is pretty simple. We just got done talking about separation of church and state. The only reason to deny gays the right to marriage is because of your religious beliefs. Since we can't make laws based on our religious beliefs, then we can't prevent gays from getting married. Can we? I don't think that makes sense. Now, I I totally agree that we can't force the Catholic Church or any other church or anybody that doesn't agree with it to perform the ceremony. That's their right. But I totally agree uh, with the liberals on this one. Um, why, why are we going to hate on these people uh, because of their sexual orientation? What is it hurting anybody? And, and for businesses, uh, the, the gay community, they're, they got some money. You know, if, if you're turning down business from the gay and lesbian community, uh, sorry for you. Somebody else is going to rake in all that cash. Uh, they're human beings just like us. It's no different than uh, treating somebody differently because of their race or their gender or any other reason. It's just ridiculous in today's society. Uh, it's, it's time that we start being the country that we say we are and start tolerating other people. All right, that's all I got to say on that when I'm liberal. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back with Social Security.
If you're looking for a better way to clean the air in your home or office, you need the all-new ozone light. It's as simple as changing your light bulbs. The ozone light looks like a normal spiral type of light bulb. It screws in most standard light sockets, but it's not a normal light bulb. It's coated with titanium dioxide. It's completely safe, but this unique coating kills most airborne bacteria, mold spores, and neutralizes odors. Just one light cleans the air in an entire room and lasts eight times longer than the normal light bulb. If you have smokers, if you have allergies, if you have pet odors, mold, or mildew, you need the ozone light. It will wipe them out. And you have our word. If you're not satisfied with the way the ozone light cleans the air in your home, simply return it for a full refund. Call 1-800-380-4095. 1-800-380-4095. 1-800-380-4095. Or visit airtimestore.com. That's airtimestore.com. Let me ask you a question. Question. Are you getting enough? I bet you'd love more, right? Well, AdamandEve.com wants to give you more with 10 free gifts. First, you'll get a sexy surprise for her. Second, a specially selected toy for him. And third, a little something we know you'll both enjoy. Plus, you'll get six full-length adult movies on DVD. And number 10, free shipping on your entire order. So what do you have to do to get your 10 free gifts? It's not hard. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. It could be an adventurous new toy, sexy piece of lingerie, or anything you desire. Just enter offer code GIFT13 at checkout and you'll get all 10 free gifts. Go check out adamandeve.com today. Select one item and get 10 free gifts, including free shipping. When you enter offer code GIFT13, that's G-I-F-T-13 at adamandeve.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 1-800-441-3678 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 1-800-441-3678 to take your call now call 1-800-441-3678 that's 1-800-441-3678 again 1-800-441-3678 all right we're back um just check the chat room and hey it's still pretty lonely in there i i have one person in there gary thanks uh gary brought up a good point uh regarding the uh gay marriage uh state of florida has gone as far as to stop providing wedding services at the courthouse for all people just so that they don't have to uh, perform a gay marriage. That is really ridiculous. This is uh, one of my big beefs with uh, the state of Florida. We are so far behind the times, and the people running this state are are just cavemen. Pam Bondi, uh, it's time you go. Governor Scott, be glad to see you go, too. Thank God for term limits he will not be able to buy another election all right we're going to move on to social security now this is an important topic to everybody especially you young folks out there listening listen in on this because this is your future uh social security was created uh i believe in the 60s uh to help older americans uh survive their retirement years it's it's impossible to keep working your whole life. When, when you get to be 60, 70, 80 years old, uh, you're not swinging hammers and, and doing the kinds of things you could do when you were younger. And we realized a long time ago that as the greatest nation in the world, it was our responsibility to take care of our senior citizens. So we created Social Security. Now, since then, it's branched out a little bit, and we also take care of disabled people. I'm one of them. 
And Social Security, to me, is a very important, um, uh, an important thing that our government offers us that, yes, we pay for. I, I worked my whole life and paid into Social Security so that I could collect it now. A lot of people don't want to pay into their Social Security, but they do want to collect all of the government handouts that, that come across the board. I, I have great issue with this, but let's get to the to the point. Conservatives believe that uh, the current Social Security system is in serious financial trouble. Changes are necessary because the U.S. will be unable to maintain the current system in the future, and they support a proposal to allow a portion of Social Security dollars to be withheld to be put in an account chosen by the individual. In other words, play the stock market. Liberals believe generally oppose any change to the current Social Security system. Opinions vary on whether the current system is in trouble or not, uh, but they believe that changing the current system will cause people to lose their Social Security benefits in the future. And there's no doubt that's true. If, if you allow people to choose whether or not to pay into Social Security, it will be just the same as the insurance system. People will not buy it until they think they need it. And that, that is the big, that's why Obamacare or, or the Affordable Health Care Plan, whatever you want to call it, that's, that's why that uh, was necessary to begin with. Not only to help our poor people get health care, but to save uh, the millions of dollars that are being thrown away at the emergency rooms. Now, this is the same situation. If you take away Social Security, there's a lot of people right now that are working under the table, not paying into Social Security. And uh, at the same time, they're collecting food stamps, another government program that Republicans want to do away with. Now, if you don't want to pay into your Social Security, then you really don't have a right to complain when your services suck. If you want to have a decent retirement, sure, if you can afford to invest, that's a great way to go. But investments are risky. Investments can be gone. They can, they can blow up in a minute. Uh, and then your, your whole retirement is, is toast. You've got nothing. With the Social Security system, it's guaranteed. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere unless we let it go somewhere. So it's up to us. I'm totally liberal on this. Uh, it's up to us to make sure that our Social Security system stays in place so that our senior citizens uh, aren't eating dog food, aren't ending up homeless. Uh, they, they work their whole lives raising their families, paying their taxes, and uh, they need to be treated better. I, I personally think that uh, Social Security sh should be raised because too many people that are on Social Security are living in poverty, and that, that's a bad issue. So if anybody has a different, uh, different take on that, I'd like to hear it, but uh, nobody's going to tell me that, that uh, we can do better by privatizing Social Security. What are, what are the Papa John's employees going to do with that? Let's move on to the United Nations. Uh, conservatives say that the United Nations have repeatedly failed in its essential mission to preserve world peace. True. Wars, genocide, and human rights abuses of the majority of its member states uh, prove the point. Uh, history shows that the United States, not the UN, is the global force for spreading freedom, prosperity, tolerance, and peace. The U.S. should never subvert its national interest to those of the UN. And also, I'm going to throw this in, our military should never wear a UN uniform. They should always wear a United States military uniform. They should always represent our country not be under the command of any foreign government or any foreign leaders. That's where I stand on that. Uh, the liberals believe that the United States has a moral and legal obligation to support the United Nations. 
The UN can be effective in promoting peace and human rights. The U.S. should not have acted in Iraq without UN approval. The U.S. should submit its national interests to the greater good. Bullshit. Don't believe that for a minute. I'm totally conservative on this. Uh, I agree with um, working with the United Nations. I, I, I believe it's a good program, but I don't think we should yield to it by any means. Uh, first of all, we've got three uh, veto members on, on the committee that are our enemies. We will never strike a peace deal as long as Russia and China have veto power. So it's really pointless. Uh, when we can work together, it's a great thing. But when we can't work together, the United States needs to go off on its own and do what we have to do. We're going to do uh, at least, uh, coming up next here is the war in Iraq and then the war on terrorism. But we're going to be doing a whole segment on, on this issue because this is obviously very important to everybody in our country right now with the wars going on. All right, so I'm conservative on that issue, and we're going to go on to the war in Iraq. The conservatives believe that it was a preemptive strike to protect the U.S. Uh, the intelligence indicated that Saddam Hussein possessed and had used weapons of mass destruction. Um, he would allow the United, he wouldn't allow the United Nations weapons inspectors to confirm his claim that he had destroyed his WMDs. Now. Uh, the liberals believe that uh, it, it was a war for oil. And, and many of us Americans, I think, believe that too, that this war was really uh, all about the oil. And uh, I, I have to agree with that. I'm not against the fact that we're at war in Iraq or that we went to war in Iraq. Uh, that was a bad dude. He needed, he needed to be dealt with, and, and the U.N. wasn't going to do it. So my problem with it is that we took the attention away from our main mission, which was supposed to be going after Saddam, or Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan. That mission would have been completed a lot sooner if we had not redirected so much attention to Iraq. And a lot of people believe that what we did in Iraq is the reason that ISIS is active today. That could be true. It's very possible. And if so, that's, you know, uh, what we get for going to war. But uh, they need to be dealt with just, just the same. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I can't decide. Am I liberal or conservative, do you think, Lou, on this one? I'm really not too sure because I'm still undecided on what the hell I am. Right, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm shooting both sides here. I me, I'm a warmonger. I say, um, you know, just bomb them all and finish the job. I I agree with that. Uh, when you've had an area, a continent at war as long as they've been at war, and uh, decades of people trying to create peace over there, you know, it's not going to happen. It's an unstable region that is creating instability around the world. Correct. So, in that case, I think you got to cut the head off the snake. So, I guess I'm I'm going to go with the conservative on that. Let's move on to to what we we're just talking about: the war in Iraq. Conservatives say that this. Oh no! Wait, we just covered that. I'm sorry. The war on terrorism, ISIS, Al Qaeda. They're popping up everywhere. Um, oh, forgot the guy's name in, in Africa there. Um, Boko Haram, who, who is now part of ISIS. Why? Because he was getting his tail kicked. So he had to join a bigger group. Well, here's the way the conservatives feel that the world toward which the militant Islamists strive cannot peacefully coexist with the Western world. That's an understatement in itself because they can't even exist amongst themselves. Uh, militant Islamists have repeatedly attacked Americans and American interests here and abroad. The terrorists must be stopped and destroyed. 
Liberals think that 9-11 was caused by America's arrogant foreign policy. America needs to stop angering other countries, and the threat posed by terrorism is exaggerated by President Bush for his own political advantage. Now, while I believe that 9-11 may have been caused by our arrogant foreign policies, um, tough shit. Uh, the threat of terrorism is not going to go away by changing our foreign policies. Uh, we've had a long history of trying to do business with those people in the Middle East. And if we're going to do business with them, then these sorts of things are going to happen. We're going to have to have some sort of uh, control over what happens to our people over there. And uh, it, if that upsets somebody and they, they want to, to do something nutty and kill a bunch of people. I don't think they're justified in that. Um, there's plenty of other ways to, to get your word out. I mean, I'm doing it right now. But uh, the, the conservative viewpoint on this, uh, actually, I think it doesn't go far enough. Uh, I'm conservative on this one, to say the least. Um, I believe, personally, that ISIS has escalated to the level of a world war. Uh, people don't want to say it's a world war because it's not one guy. There, there's no Hitler. There's no Stalin. Whatever. These guys are spread out across the globe. They're in every country, including America. They haven't staged any any high profile uh, big battles here, and they better not because we got guns. But they have let their terror be felt all across the world. And the only way to stop that is to send an overwhelming force, not a U.N. peacekeeper force, not a couple of drones, uh, not just enough to get the job done. You need to go over there and squash them, a big foot on a little bug. Don't play around. Blow the hell out of them. Get it done with. This ISIS group is the worst group of terrorists this world has ever seen. They don't even get along with their own people. They're going through killing other Muslims. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on the Quran, but I, I did a short bit of research on this. And from the little bit I've read on it so far, it's, it's like, the Lutherans going to war with the Baptists because the Baptists dunk you and we just dip your forehead. doesn't make any sense. And if, if you're going to assassinate and burn down an entire town or kill an entire people, these are some crazy individuals. Now, I, I don't know what it's going to take for the entire world to turn their focus to this and put a stop to it, but we've got to quit. Uh, fighting the little battles. We've got to quit uh, just doing air raids and not getting involved on the ground. Everybody needs to be involved on the ground. Everybody who is affected, every country in that region needs to send a force, an overwhelming force. It's the only way this is going to stop. Uh, so I'm going to go conservative plus on that one. All right. I got one topic left on here, uh, and that's welfare. This is this is a, a a real good one to argue about. A lot of people have an opinion on this. Conservatives believe that uh, conservatives oppose long-term welfare. They don't believe anybody should be on welfare for life. Uh, we need to provide opportunities to make it possible per, for poor and low-income workers to become self-reliant. It is far more compassionate and effective to encourage a person to become self-reliant rather than keeping them dependent on the government for money. Liberals believe in uh, the support of welfare. We need welfare to provide for the poor. Uh, conservatives oppose it because they're not... I'm not, I'm not even going to say that. Conservatives oppose it because they don't want to spend the money on it. Uh, they have it phrased differently here, but uh, I'm not reading that. Uh, we have welfare to bring fairness to America 
e American economic life, without welfare, life below the poverty line would be intolerable. Well, guess what? It still is. Uh, even with welfare, there are pe people who are living on welfare are just barely surviving. That's not living. We're not partying. Uh, the idiots that want to drug test people before they get their stu food stamps, you're wasting more money on the drug test than you would buying them the food. And bottom line is if you can't afford your food, uh, there's a real slim chance that you're addicted to many drugs. I'm totally liberal on this issue. I, I think we need to do a lot more. There is no reason with all the money in this country that it can't be spread around a little better. You rich son of a guns better start doing a little more donating, giving to the poor. Uh, there's, there's no need for American citizens, American citizens to be homeless, to be hungry, to be suffering. Now, if you, if you want to spit on the illegal immigrants, uh, uh, you're still disgusting, but go ahead. They're, they don't, they're not Americans. At least you can say that. But we're spitting on our own people. We're stepping on them in the gutters. This is not the way uh, a society works. This is a civilization. We're supposed to be the most civilized society in, on the planet. Let's start acting like it. Let's start doing something for, for our, our homeless people and our poor. And by God, let's take care of our veterans. On that note, this has been Real Talk Radio. I'm Stitch. Thank you all for listening in. I'll be back here next week at 7 o'clock. I hope next week some of you will talk to me. Have a good night.